This is Gina from RN2 Professors with a video for you from my medical surgical series on upper and lower respiratory infections. In this video, I'm going to review questions on upper and lower respiratory infections. These questions focus on assessments and interventions for patients with these conditions. I will also show you how to determine what the question is asking and how to get the correct answer and explain the rationale for the correct and incorrect answers. To get notified about more videos like this, click the subscribe button below and comment on the video. Let's take a look at our first question. The home health care nurse is talking on the phone to a male client diagnosed with hypertension and hears the client sneezing. The client tells the nurse he has been blowing his nose frequently. Which question should the nurse ask the client? Number one, have you had the flu shot in the last two weeks? Number two, are there any small children in the home? Number three, are you taking over-the-counter medication for these symptoms? Number four, do you have any cold sores associated with your sneezing? This is an analysis question and is part of the assessment phase of the nursing process. The two key words to focus on in this question are cold and hypertension. Number one, have you had the flu shot in the last two weeks? This is not the correct answer. While influenza is a viral illness that could cause these symptoms, the immunization should not give the patient the illness. Number two, are there any small children in the home? This is not the correct answer. Encountering small children increases the risk of contracting colds and flu, but the patient has a problem not just a potential one. Number three, are you taking over-the-counter medication for these symptoms? This is the correct answer. Patients with hypertension should not take many of the over-the-counter medications because they work by vasoconstriction, which will also increase their hypertension. Number four, do you have any cold sores associated with your sneezing? This is not the correct answer. Cold sores are an infection caused by the herpes virus. Number three is the answer to this question. Anytime a patient has a chronic illness, they should discuss over-the-counter medication with their healthcare provider or pharmacist before taking it. Next question. The client has been diagnosed with chronic sinusitis. Which sign symptom alerts the nurse to a potentially life-threatening complication? Number one, muscle weakness. Number two, prolian sputum. Number three, nuchal rigidity. Or number four, intermittent loss of muscle control. This is an analysis question and it's part of the assessment phase of the nursing process. To answer this question, you need to understand basic anatomy and physiology and how it relates to our question. Number one, muscle weakness. This is not the correct answer. Muscle weakness is a sign or symptom of malaysia, but not a life-threatening complication of sinusitis. Number two, prolian sputum. This is not the correct answer. Prolian sputum would be a sign symptom of lung infection, but is not a life-threatening complication of sinusitis. Number three, nuchal rigidity. This is the correct answer. Nuchal rigidity is a sign symptom of meningitis. Number four, intermittent loss of muscle control. This is not the correct answer. Intermittent loss of muscle control can be a symptom of multiple sclerosis, but it would not be a life-threatening complication of sinusitis. Number three is our answer. Here's the next question. Charge nurse on a surgical floor is making assignments. 
which client should be assigned to the most experienced registered nurse. Number one, a 36-year-old client who has undergone an antral irrigation for sinusitis yesterday and has moderate pain. Number two, a six-year-old client scheduled for a tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy this morning who will not swallow medication. Number three, the 18-year-old client who had a Caldwell Luke procedure three days ago and has prurient drainage on the drip pad. Number four, the 45-year-old client diagnosed with a peritonsillar abscess who requires IV piggyback antibiotic therapy four times a day. This is an analysis question and is in the planning phase of the nursing process. For each situation described, you need to determine if it is expected or within normal limits to answer the question correctly. Number one, the 36-year-old client who has undergone an antral irrigation for sinusitis yesterday and has moderate pain. This is not the correct answer. The patient is one day post-op and moderate pain is an expectation after surgery. A less experienced nurse can take care of this patient. Number two, the six-year-old client scheduled for a tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy this morning who will not swallow medication. This is not the correct answer. A child about to go to surgery involving the throat area can be expected to have painful swallowing. This does not require the most experienced nurse. Number three, the 18-year-old client who had a Caldwell Luke procedure three days ago and has prurient drainage on the drip pad. This is the correct answer. The post-op patient with prurient drainage could be developing an infection. The experienced nurse will need to assess and monitor the patient's condition. Number four, the 45-year-old client diagnosed with a peritonsillar abscess requiring IV piggyback antibiotics four times a day is not the correct answer. Any nurse who can administer IV piggyback medications can care for that patient. Number three is our answer. It is the only option that gives data that is not within the normal limits and requires a nurse with more knowledge and experience. Next question. The nurse is planning the care of a client diagnosed with pneumonia and writes a problem of impaired gas exchange. Which is an expected outcome for this problem? Number one, performs chest physiotherapy three times a day. Number two, able to complete activities of daily living. Number three, ambulates in the hall several times during each shift. Number four, alert and oriented to person, place, time, and events. This is an analysis question in the diagnosis phase of the nursing process. To answer this question, you need an appropriate outcome for the patient related to the nursing diagnosis of impaired gas exchange. Number one, performs chest physiotherapy three times a day. This is not the correct answer. Patients do not perform chest physiotherapy. This is normally done by the respiratory therapist. This is a staff goal, not a client goal. Number two, able to complete activities of daily living. This is not the correct answer. This would be a goal for self-care deficit, but not for impaired gas exchange. Number three, ambulates in the hall several times during each shift. This is not the correct answer. This would be a goal for the problem of activity intolerance. Number four, alert and oriented to person, place, time, and events. This is the correct answer. Impaired gas exchange results in hypoxia. The earliest sign of hypoxia is a change in the level of consciousness. Number four is the answer to our question. It is the appropriate outcome to have for this patient. Next question. The nurse is caring for a client diagnosed with pneumonia. Which information should the nurse include in the teaching plan? Select all that apply. Number one, place the client on oxygen delivered by nasal cannula. Number two, plan for periods of rest during activities of daily living. 
Number three, place the client on a fluid restriction of 1,000 milliliters a day. Number four, restrict the client's smoking to two to three cigarettes per day. Number five, monitor the client's pulse oximity readings every four hours. This is an analysis question in the planning phase of the nursing process. It is also a select all that applies question. So look at each answer individually to see if it fits the question. Number one, place the client on oxygen delivered by nasal cannula. This is a correct answer. The client diagnosed with pneumonia will have some degree of gas exchange deficit. Administering oxygen will help the client. Number two, plan for periods of rest during activities of daily living. This is a correct answer. Activities of daily living require energy and therefore oxygen consumption. Spacing the activities allows the client to rebuild oxygen reserves between activities. Number three. Place the client on a fluid restriction of 1,000 milliliters a day. This is not a correct answer. Clients are encouraged to drink at least 2,000 milliliters daily to help thin secretions. Number four, restrict the client's smoking to two to three cigarettes per day. This is not a correct answer. Cigarette smoking depresses the action of the cilia in the lungs. Any smoking should be prohibited. Number five. Monitor the client's pulse oximity readings every four hours. This is a correct answer. Pulse oximity readings provide the nurse with an estimate of oxygenation in the periphery. Numbers one, two, and five are the correct answers. They are appropriate interventions for this patient. Here's our final question. The day shift charge nurse on a medical unit is making rounds after report. Which client should be seen first? Number one, the 65-year-old client diagnosed with tuberculosis who has a sputum specimen to be sent to the laboratory. Number two, the 76-year-old client diagnosed with aspiration pneumonia who has a clogged feeding tube. Number three, the 45-year-old client diagnosed with pneumonia who has a pulse oximity reading of 92. Number four, the 39-year-old client diagnosed with bronchitis who has an arterial oxygen level of 89. This is a priority question and you need to know what patient is the most in need of care. Use ABCs and Maslow's to determine what patient needs to be seen first. Number one, the 65-year-old client diagnosed with tuberculosis who has a sputum specimen to be sent to the laboratory. This is not the correct answer. The specimen needs to be taken to the laboratory within a reasonable time frame, but a UAP can take the specimen to the laboratory. Number two, the 76-year-old client diagnosed with aspiration pneumonia who has a clogged feeding tube. This is not the correct answer. Clog feeding tubes occur with some regularity. Delay in feeding a client will not result in permanent damage. Number three, the 45 year old client diagnosed with pneumonia was a pulse oximity reading of 92. This is the correct answer. A pulse oximity reading of 92 means that arterial blood saturation is somewhere around 60 to 70 percent. Number four, the 39-year-old client diagnosed with bronchitis who has an arterial oxygen level of 89. This is not the correct answer. Arterial oxygenation normal values are 80 percent to 100 percent. Number three is our correct answer. This is the client that should be seen first. Thank you for watching our video today. If you liked it, subscribe and click that notif- Thank you for watching our video today. If you liked the video, subscribe for free and click the bell to be notified when future videos come out.